We got interested in this project a couple of years ago. Um, it started in, with my conversation with Ann Bernstein, who's the head of the Center for Development and Enterprise in South Africa. Um, and it was a conversation about the successes of three democracies, Brazil, India, and South Africa. Um, I work quite a lot on countries that aren't so successful or that haven't made a transition to democracy. And I, I know that in countries like, countries like that are all, always searching for models, for role models, not, not blueprints, but just new ideas, ways to go. By taking three think tanks from India, Brazil, and South Africa, who have lived through the process of constructing and building a democratic market economy, what we're getting is authentic voices. And what in particular I hope comes out of this is the message that there is no such thing as a best practice. One has to identify solutions for the country conditions. There's a, a, a global contest taking place between an authoritarian approach to growth and development and a democratic one. And this has got increased traction in many parts of the developing world because of the success of China and what it's delivered over the last 30 years but also because of the perceived relative decline of Western democratic capitalism. And I think that gives increased traction to this debate in the developing world today. There is a big challenge to our democracy because countries which have been able to develop and to grow in a, in a democratic environment uh, are now facing difficulties. Uh, and uh, people very often get anxious about the difficulties and they say, well, perhaps uh, the democracy is really being a problem because we have to negotiate things, you have to go through slow processes of decision making. So they, some people get uh, more or less fascinated by the idea, which I think is a wrong idea, that if you have an authoritarian regime, things could be done in a, in more efficiently. A whole lot of countries, whole range of countries in the world have made that transition, but they have not stabilized democracies. And even some long-standing democracies in the developing world, like India, uh, have to improve the quality of their democracy. Uh, you know, tackling problems like corruption, uh, like uh, accountability, and a range of, whole range of other things. All three countries have now entered a difficult phase. Economic growth has slowed, and they have enormous expectations still to meet. So whatever their achievements, which have been considerable, all three countries have a long way to go in terms of dealing with poverty, including more people in the modern economy, and getting the kind of growth rates they need to provide employment and a better quality of life. The paper argues that um, both that these countries should be, should be admired for their successes, which they often aren't, because they're, they're too focused on, people are too focused on what's wrong with them still, but that also they need a second wave of reforms, they need further market reforms, and that the best way to achieve those reforms is through deepening the democracy and through creating new political coalitions of, you know, of people who will support those kinds of reforms. And actually, if you look at these countries, they're, do, they're producing some great policy initiatives which the West could really learn from. I would point to um, the conditional cash transfers, making welfare conditional on certain uh, good behaviours which they have in Brazil. But there are all sorts of examples from medical innovation to, to, to welfare innovation to innovation in the way that you deliver state services. So the West does, no longer has a monopoly. We need, really need to look at and listen to what's going on in the South. Having some frame of reference from successful emerging uh, democratic context is very, very valuable. And I think in this respect, uh, the Legatum Institute Democracy Works report has the, has the value of showing the real challenges and some of the warts that are involved in these uh, reform efforts, but also showing the achievements that have been made, which I think get uh, uh, underappreciated all too often.